Hello everyone, I am back. Welcome to Pamela's Crochet and Knit Corner. I'm going to apologize right up front. If you hear any noise, it is my air conditioning. It is almost 100 degrees here today in Southern California. And for the first time, I am taping on my phone. So I'm trying to look at the little dot over there and not at myself in the viewfinder. My computer decided to go kaput, so I'll have to figure that out at a later date. But how are you guys? I've missed everyone. I know you guys have missed me. Uh, thank you for checking on me. I am well. I took a break. Um, I just didn't have the mojo going and I am very stressed out at work. It's my busy season at work. So all of that rolled into one and plus I've been having some fun with my family so I'll tell you guys all about it. But first, let me welcome all of my new subscribers. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for spending some time with me here on Pamela's Crochet and Knit Corner. We kick it old school style, so be sure to get your pen and pad out and take some notes. I do not edit, so if I make a mistake, I will definitely make the correction in the description box, as I will also post my links. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you want to get one of these awesome signs, you can do so from Brenda, the newbie crocheter. And I will leave her link below to her channel. So, it's been almost a month. Wow. <laughs> but I am back and I am very happy to be back. And I have some things that I want to share with you guys. I have a couple of finished objects, and as you all know, Whipville is still overpopulated, and I have the nerve to start some new whips. So I will share a couple of those with you, and then just tell you what I've been up to. So, let's start off, it's really hard to look at this little circle here. Let's start off with a finished object. I am super proud of this one because I was able to use my minis on this one. Um, I have a mini mansion. It's what I call my mini mansion. It just, it just houses my minis. So I have been collecting minis pretty much everywhere I go. And then I received a beautiful um, mini set from my friend, you know who you are, and from uh, Yarn Cafe Creations, beautiful yarn. Um, I will leave that information below. So I was looking for the perfect project to use my minis. And lo and behold, Fiber Flux, she posted a brand new video. And let me show you. This is Emerald, and she is wearing the Take It Easy scarf. And I used most of my minis to create this beautiful scarf. This is crochet. I am a crocheter who knits a bit. So this beauty is all crochet. And I wanted it long so that I could wrap it around several times. The tutorial did not call for tassels, but I thought the tassels were a cute touch. And if you look closely, yes, those are beads. I put beads on top of the tassels. I thought it would be a cute little touch for that, but I absolutely love, 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 love this scarf. It's 
See how long that is? It's so fun. And look at all of the beautiful colors. Crochet. So what I did was, let me put this back on Emerald. What I did was I used Hawthorn fingering and I held it with each mini. I still have some left. And I I saved a piece of each mini from the um, Yarn Cafe Creations mini set that I received as a gift. Because I didn't want to use up all of my minis so quickly, that's why I paired it with Hawthorne Fingering, which was perfect. And that way it made my minis last throughout the scarf. So, I tried something that I learned from watching Christy Glass Knits. Um, she also crochets, and even Stephen West. Um, they always say either do dark, light, dark, light, or light, dark, light, dark. So that's what I tried to do here in this sequence. And I think I did a pretty good job of that. Look at those colors. Look at this one. Fun, fun, fun. So this is the Take It Easy Scarf by Fiberflux. And I will link that below. My next finished object. I was part of a swap called Swing Into Spring. And I got my swap partner already so I can show you guys what I made because it's a finished object before I ship it off to her. Um, this was hosted by Joyce, Joyce McTeer. Uh, she also has a YouTube channel. She is a wonderful jewelry maker and all around inspirational person. So I was very excited and happy to be a part of this swap. So I'm finished now, we're all done. I have my partner and I wanna show you this before I send it off. I am super glad to be finished with the Linus shawl. I used this really nice yarn. It's called Audine Wools. It was from my knit crate. 80% superwash merino, 20% tinsel. It is a sport weight yarn, so it's nice and airy and fluffy. And voila, the Linus shawl is a beautiful asymmetrical shawl. There's my tag. Very nice, very flowy, very bouncy. And I love how it just, it starts at that dramatic point. This is knit for all of my knitters. And this has been blocked. Very beautiful for spring. I think just something really nice to throw over your shoulders and take a little bit of the chill off. So my swap partner will receive this. And also, I know you guys remember this. I absolutely love this. This is a Ross beanie. I love making the Ross hats, you guys know that. But this one is the Ross hat with a P-twist, and I refer to it as a P-twist 
because I do a row of purling to separate between the brim and the body. So this is the finished project of that. Aren't those colors beautiful? Absolutely stunning. I put a ladybug on everything that I make. Very, very pretty. So this is going to uh, my spring partner. And these are the yarns that I used. This is Lady Dye Yarns in mint. And this is Chelsea Lux Yarns. Cobblestone in winter, Winterberry. And these two together made this beautiful, beautiful spring hat. You can wear it anytime, but it came out wonderful. So those go to my spring partner and I really hope that she enjoys everything. My next finished object is also knit and it is a Ross hat and I kind of cleaned out. I did good getting some things out of Whitfield. I used the Craft Smart yarn from Michaels. This is Bo Peep. And now, on this Ross hat, I really went rogue. Um, I have a tendency to do that. I always start off with the base of the Ross hat, and I'd like to give credit where credit is due. But sometimes I think, okay, how about if I do this, or how about if I do that? You know, just add a little pizzazz to it. Um, and this time I really went rogue. Now, I don't know if the light is blowing this out or not. I hope that you can see this, but this came out good. Now this has been washed and all I did was lay it flat to dry for a little bit and then I stuck it in the dryer. But if you can see all of the texture here. And then I'm always super proud of my decreases. Love that. So this feels really, really good. Um, it's soft and it'll make a nice beanie. So that's another finished object right there. And I actually did start a couple of more projects after Whitville. You guys, thank you so much for all of the love on um, a walk through Whitville, which was my last episode. This episode, by the way, is episode 55. Um, I really appreciate all of the comments and all of the views. I so appreciate that. Um, thank you so very much. I did start a couple more things. Um, this one, I really wanted to do I had wanted to make something with beads quite a while ago and Priscilla of distinctive crochet hi Priscilla by the way you guys if you aren't subscribed to her channel please do go over there uh, she may already be at 2000 but I know she wants to accomplish that feat which is awesome and congratulations i know you're going to get there so if you haven't subscribed to her channel please do she's very talented um she makes all sorts of things the star shine is my favorite and she does lots of patterns and tutorials and she has a lot going on over there so priscilla of distinctive crochet i will leave that link below if you haven't signed up Go over there and do so. Subscribe. So, um, she posted a tutorial called 
butterfly wings crochet beaded ponchette tutorial so I thought okay that is really cute and it's beaded so I went to my stash and I grabbed some yarn bee must be merino and I got that on sale at their red tag sale I remember that so I thought okay this will be perfect and then I went to my bead stash and I grabbed I got a jar of these from Michaels a while ago and these are I don't know if you'll be able to see them they're almost like a pinkish color and I have a whole jar full of them so I put them in here so that I could scoop them up as I was using them now this is um, a whip because I'm gonna have Priscilla I'm gonna have to contact you because I I don't know what I did but um, I only have one side done and you guys are probably thinking hmm that looks awfully small well no it does fit um, this will block out nicely and I have tried it on so I have one side done and excuse the stitch markers but I do need those so she has you step by step add your beads on and then what I did is I chose to add more beads where you see them in the body right here I chose to do that I learned another way to add beads to a project which is slightly different from the way that Priscilla has you add the beads here. These are done beforehand and these are done while you crochet. So I have one side done and let me show you It will look like that and this will block out because it comes right about here on me so it will it does block out this is a very large billowy top by the way it makes me look <laughs> but um, anyway this is very very pretty and I have to do the other side so I'll email you Priscilla <laughs> um, because I, I don't know if I did something wrong or not, but you guys check out this tutorial and I will leave this link below. If you want to try something with beads and just have something pretty and fun, this is really nice and it's fun to do. And of course I have my beautiful mermaid bag. I keep everything in a project bag as you guys all well know. I love the project bags. My next whip is the first thing that before Priscilla um, put up her tutorial, I was watching another tutorial on how to add beads to a project so I will link that below as well um, and I decided to make a shawl because I want to uh, take it with me when we go to the mountains and keep it there so that I'll have something to um, keep me warm and I know it's hot right now but it doesn't bother me to work with heavier yarn in the summertime um, I had these two skeins of Premier Puzzle. I've had this for the longest time. So I went to my stash and voila, I am making the Snowberries Blanket Shawl. 
by Fiber Flux. Can you guys tell I like Fiber Flux? I really do like Jennifer's tutorials. Um, they're awesome. But this, her tutorial is just a plain shawl. It um, has nothing to do with beads. I did that on my own. So, keeping everything in this clear bag. I'm sorry you guys, I'm having a hard time taping on my phone. I don't know where to look. So I apologize in advance if this video isn't good, but I went to go turn on my computer and it doesn't work, so I don't have time to do anything um, until tomorrow. But I wanted to get a video out for you guys, so my apologies. Um, okay, this is really nice. And I'm going to use both of the skeins. I'm on the second skein now, which means that I'm almost finished. Okay, you see the beads? I decided to put them lower because at the time I didn't think that I was going to use the beads and then I thought you know what why not so these I added as I worked these were not added prior to the project and I that's the tutorial that I was speaking of uh, when I was showing the ponchette because I did it both ways with uh, the ponchette and this way it was just strictly added as I went along. Here's the story behind the beads. I am Ooh. That's me when I was in college and I used to braid my hair myself. It would take me pretty much all weekend to do it. And those are the beads. I found the, I found the beads and I put them in this container. I was in my cabinet in the hall just scrummaging around and I thought, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. These are the beads from all those, and I mean a long time ago, all those beads from all of those years ago. And so what I did was I picked out the cream colored ones, gave them a little wash off and I used them, but I, I couldn't believe it. These Some of these were never even opened and they still have the tags on them. This is the bead that I used to put on. Oh, I took it off. That's the bead there. That one is for, um, are these. So I thought, oh, wow, nostalgic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so long ago and I used remember you guys when I did my crochet hook video and I said that I do not use these because I don't like them because of this this glides perfectly with the yarn the puzzle yarn it glides perfectly with the yarn and I would keep my beads in here and then just select them as I used them. But this is going to be nice and warm. Snow, berries, blanket, 
shawl by Fiberflex. And I will leave that information below for you guys. Um, Emerald is feeling kind of exposed at the moment. Okay, I have another whip. Uh, one of my coworkers, her daughter, who went to school with my son, um, everybody's grown now, she is going to become a mom. So I am making her a baby blanket. It's like you're working on lots of things that are warm weather, Pamela, but it doesn't bother me. Um, I used the Granny Square Method by Nadia Yarn Utopia because her Granny Square is continuous and you don't have to uh, skip any spaces and all you do is chain up and turn. Uh, there's no slip stitch over. So I have a tub full of Bernat blanket yarn, which I absolutely love to make blankets out of. This stuff washes up wonderfully. You can put it in the dryer and it's perfect for a baby. You don't have to worry about getting anything on it. So I am making this baby blanket pretty pretty so I have a ways to go and um, I've got to get that finished by the end of this month because my co-worker is retiring so I want her to take it with her uh, to give to her daughter um, that's it for crochet and knitting and all of those things um, what have I been into oh ah! I've been enjoying spending time with family and friends. Um, it started in May and we could gather. Um, all of us have been vaccinated. So uh, my nephew who is grown, um, it was his birthday in May. So his sister who is grown, everybody's grown. Um, she planned an entire weekend. So it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we went to the movies. We went bowling, we went go-kart racing, uh, we had dinner in Victoria Gardens, and we just had a whole weekend full of family and fun. And then uh, a week after that, uh, there was something going on with my grand niece and nephew, my sister's grandchildren, they're here for the summer. And um, after that <laughs> was um, my niece, uh, and I'm also her godmother, she graduated from college with a double associate's degree just this past weekend. So she was super excited. Um, she took her time doing it and um, she's been accepted into Cal Poly Pomona to finish off her bachelor's. And we just really celebrated um, her on uh, Friday. And then Saturday, this past Saturday, um, Z, Zelda NRJ3, um, Louise to me. <laughs> um, she invited me to go to the Knitting Tree in Los Angeles where we've been several times. Uh, they were having uh, dyers of color present their work and um, she asked, you know, invited us to come down and oh my gosh, it was spectacular. And so then um, Z contacted Kim, uh, Kim the Crafty Nomad, and Vicky of Gotcha Hooked, and Leo the Sassy Cuban. So we were just all so happy to see one another, and um, it was really amazing to be able to go inside of the yarn store and shop and um, look at yarn again, see yarn, touch yarn, and see everybody again. So that was really a lot of fun. And we spent the whole day together. Um, Z, myself, and Leo, we ended up at um, one of the favorite seafood places that we like to eat. And then we left there and went to Barnes and Noble. I haven't been in a bookstore in probably two years. And when Z said, let's go to Barnes and Noble, I'm like, will they let us in? 
<laughs> so she had already called and sure enough they were open we grabbed a table and I think it was knit in public day if I'm not mistaken so we grabbed a table and had some coffee and some um, pastries and we stayed there until they closed at 8 o'clock they were putting the chairs on the on the tables and everything so that was a full fun day of just uh, connecting with yarny friends and spending some time out and then uh, um, I'm sure I've left something out but I've just been on the go and then working full time every single day and just trying to manage it my crojo left my knitting Joe left <laughs> everybody left me for a while so I just thought you know some days I didn't do anything I didn't feel like knitting I didn't feel like crocheting and even though I do it almost every single day I wasn't going to force myself to do it if I didn't feel like doing it I just I couldn't do that so I would continue to watch my you know other people's videos on uh, YouTube and participate in the lives um, DOI creation every Sunday. She is taking the summer off though, and other lives, uh, Miss Tina's live, and um, so I kept up, or I tried to keep up with the videos on YouTube. So I did shop on Saturday uh, at the Knitting Tree. How could you not? Um, so I do want to share those with you, and then I also uh, received some gifts from my friend you know who you are so I'll share those with you it was so nice like I said to buy yarn and to support young dyers who this was their first time dyeing their first time doing a presentation uh, it was fantastic you guys probably saw this on Z's video check out Z's latest video that she just put up um, she captures our day beautifully as she always does um, She's wonderful with technology, period. I've learned 95% of what I know technology-wise from her, um, and she's fantastic with the camera, so she captured a lot of our day in her latest video, and I will link that below as well. Actually, it is on my community page. If you want to scoot over to the community page and check that out, then please do. Uh, this was one of my purchases uh, from Chroma and Psych, and I will link her information below. This is called Deep, Deep, Title. Oh gosh, time for these. <laughs> deep, Deep, Title Babe. Awesome name. This is a hundred percent super wash merino. Isn't that beautiful? And then there's a mini that 